Well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Kerry Daigle and we're hosting a call today that all of you are gonna be really excited about. You know, I get a lot of questions all the time about the Hispanic market and that's been going on for years. Mickey and I have been with this company for over 30 years and we've constantly seen a lot of the Hispanic market join us, but we've never really aggressively have gone after the Hispanic market in the United States of America. Now, many of you are very excited about the opening of Mexico coming up, of course, but if you have a plan in place to be able to make Mexico successful for you, then you're just going to be spinning your wheels and you're not going to have a whole lot of success. You can't just go into Mexico and think that you're going to take over the country. It's not going to happen. It starts here in the United States. And we've been very fortunate to be able to bring with us someone into the corporate office that has a huge amount of experience dealing with the Hispanic market. Her name is Laura Morales, and I'm probably not rolling my tongue, <laughs> but I'm getting a little better, Laura. I'm getting a little better. And Laura, have you recently joined the Juice Plus company as our director of USA Hispanic Sales? And we want to thank you for becoming part of this movement. We both know that building a new and emerging population that hasn't been touched can be very exciting, especially in the Hispanic community. Now, I understand that you've worked in the field as a teacher and a representative before becoming a corporate leader with other large direct sales companies and you would, you, you've been actually personally responsible for developing huge Hispanic markets. I want everybody to pay attention to this. This is not just someone we hire that speaks bilingual, that, that is bilingual, speaks Spanish and English. This is someone that has worked the market for many years. Laura, would you mind sharing your history as a representative in the field and also as a corporate executive? Of course, and uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. I am so excited to be here, and thank you, Carrie, for the opportunity. Thank you, Miki. Um, you said that we are very fortunate to tap into the Hispanic market with Juice Plus, but I'm definitely the one that is the most uh, privileged. I, I, I do believe that this is an amazing opportunity, and, uh, and I'm excited. I could not be more excited. Um, it's, I just see potential. I see a lot of growth. I see a lot of opportunities. And I think we have the right formula to make it happen, carry and to make it happen big. So just starting, you know, I, I've been in the company only four weeks, I think. And just starting with these kind of calls, you know, it just makes me so excited. It just makes me really, be even more passionate about what I do, which is helping my people to have a better quality of life through amazing opportunities like Juice Plus. So first and foremost, thank you so much. I am privileged and I'm honored to be here. Now to your question, and I think uh, one of the, I'm always, I always say that I'm very fortunate that I studied in this industry over 20 years ago and I started just like you, the ones who are listening, leaders as, as a leader in the, in the field. I mean, I had my regular job and uh, somebody invited me to try these great nutritional products and I love the products and I joined that company way back then. I thought it was going to be my hobby and uh, it ended up being my career for the last, uh, I would say, 25 years. And I am very blessed to know that I had this opportunity to start in this industry that way because I learned to sponsor, to recruit, to sell, to train, to mentor to build teams, to develop leaders. I, I hear the yeses and I hear all the no's. <laughs> and so I learned this, this, I learned exactly what you do in the trenches. And my success, fortunately, the success I had, I was able to build an organization of 3,000 people. And it was a big success. Um, I humbly say that I made a lot of money and I humbly say that I lost a lot of money as well. <laughs> because at that time the company disappeared as many others, unfortunately. But, you know, the knowledge and the experience I got opened doors for me to tap into the corporate side of this industry. So I've been blessed to, to work in the, in the field, to work in the corporate side. And pretty much my role has been over the last 20 years to help 
uh, companies tap into this market, to expand into this market, to know the market. You know, it's as we said before, it's not about translating documents. It's about connecting and it's about knowing what this market looks like and what it needs to make it happen. So I am, I want you to know for the ones that are listening to me, that I am your voice in the corporate office. I'm the liaison between the field and, uh, and corporate. And I'm, I'm gonna, my role is to give you, provide you and hear you so that we support you to the best of our abilities to make it happen and make it happen big. So that was, that's the foundation of my beginnings in this industry. And I, that's the reason, Carrie, that I, I understand the business better than, than, than many. You know, I understand the business because I've been in your shoes. I know what it takes. I know it's not easy. Otherwise, everybody will be at the top, right? I know it takes courage. It takes diligence. It takes discipline. I know what it takes because I was there. And you know what? That, and I say it with honesty, and I, you will always hear me saying this because I'm honest about this. I have a lot of respect for what you do, because I know it's not easy, but it is worth it. Wow, that's some great information. Now, let's get right to a question that everybody's got on their mind, because we understand that to be able to be successful in the Hispanic market, we're gonna need Spanish literature in print and digital format. Do you have an update that you could give us now in reference to that, Laura? Of course, of course. I mean, there is a whole team, you know, backing this initiative up in the corporate office. You know, as you know, it's a team effort. And one of the biggest components, of course, is start translating everything we have available. And I have to say, I'm impressed with Juice Blast. You guys have the most incredible material. And we're making sure that everything that you have available in, in English, you will have it available in Spanish. We are working as we speak, actually, our amazing team in Mexico, spearheaded by Gustavo Beltran and his team and myself, we are supervising different agencies that are professional in translations and we're working as we speak. We're gonna have the website available, the virtual office, of course, the Freedom Revolution, which is an amazing platform with so much information. Videos, of course, we're translating them as we speak, you know, and of course, collaterals and all the, and the printed material even. So it's a lot of work. It's really one of the biggest uh, components of everything that we need to do. But I'm excited to give you good news, Carrie, because this is great news. We're moving forward and we're making great progress and you will have this material in Spanish. All I ask is that you be a little bit patient because we want to make it right. We want to make it professional. We want to, we want to have all of this for all our Spanish speaking um, uh, leaders and future leaders, you know, so we're working as we speak and everything that you see now, it's gonna be, or pretty much everything that you see now, it's gonna be translated in Spanish and it's gonna be translated this year for sure. Well, we're very patient. We've been waiting 50 years to find someone <laughs> like yourself and 50 years to break into the Hispanic market. Can you imagine a 50 year old multi-billion dollar operation like Juice Plus and everyone listening in right now is on the ground floor of a solid company opening up the Hispanic market. But let's get a little more personal now, Laura. Where are you originally from and, and uh, where were you educated? Well, I was born in Guadalajara, Mexico. I was born and raised there. I went to college uh, at the University of Guadalajara there and uh, I moved to the United States around 25 years ago. So um, I always say, Carrie, that I am the real thing. I'm the real Latina, you know, I'm from Mexico. I have an accent, I'm bilingual. I like salsa picante, Chile, you know, I'm the real thing, as you can tell. And the other thing also that I think has been, uh, for me, a beautiful experience through my career is that I get to work in the US with the people that I love the most, which is my people. It is my people and it is in my heart. So it's not a job because I, I truly enjoy it. And I truly enjoy to see people's lives being transformed and uh, those around them along the way. And I'm talking about the leaders that are listening here as well. Now you mentioned, Laura, that you live in the United States now. Where are you living? I'm living in California right now for all the Californians, West region. Hey, I'm in the, in the best region. I, no, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> 
when I be with, uh, with Jason and with Kathy, I want to say I'm the best region, but it's a great region. And actually been working closely with Steve, who is uh, Shafiro, who is our RSD, and great support, I have to say, you know, the corporate office has welcomed me with open arms and I am I'm really fortunate. I'm, I feel I joined an, uh, an amazing group of people and uh, professionals and uh, that have a heart for what they do and they're very united. And so I'm, I'm really, every day I feel better and better. And every time I learn something about the company, because you know, I've been only here four weeks, I'm just uh, really even more excited and even blown away. So Steve is one of those that, as you say, you have a question, he's there, you know, you need help, he's there. So that's been great as well. Well, one thing, uh, I, I know that you've set records with other companies. You're being a little humble about this because I've done my research and I said, I want to get to know Laura from A to Z. And I found out that you absolutely have set some records, not only opening up other countries, actually, actually setting up a market a Hispanic market in the U.S. with other companies that have set records in direct sales. And now we have you here at the Juice Plus Company. I understand also that they took a lot of negotiating to be able to get you to come over to the Juice Plus Company. So my question to you, Laura, is what are your goals with the Juice Plus Company? And what attracted you to become an executive with our company when all these other companies were hanging on to you and pulling for you from everywhere. Why us? <laughs> you know, um, I, I'm just so happy and so excited about this. I feel I'm very, very privileged to be part of Juice Plus. And um, I believe in all honesty that Juice Plus is the best kept secret in the Hispanic market, you know, and we need to change that. So my role is to help you guys. My role is to lock arms with you. My role is to work closely with you and partner with you leaders to make sure that you have a chance into this amazing opportunity that your business expand and grow into the Hispanic market. And I wanna see Juice Plus to be the top leader in this industry, that people would know that this is the best opportunity ever, that is gonna change people's lives. And I'm excited about this, um, Carrie, because it's about helping people, isn't it? It's about changing lives, isn't it? And it really, I'm fired up just to see and to even dream about the families that are coming, the, the, the people that are gonna be coming, that they're gonna have a great story to share and helping them to change their lives, helping them to, to improve their quality of life and to provide that for their families. It's just an incredible opportunity. So I want that to be not only my goal, but our goal to make um, Juice Blast the top leader with the best opportunity in the Hispanic market and it will be known all over. Wow, I feel your energy. I really do. And it's great for everyone to get to know you personally now, Laura. Now, we, we, you and I and several people are probably on here today have worked foreign markets. And today we want to offer some tips and advice for years of experience that we've had in how to monopolize on what we call this new market, because it is a new market, the Hispanic market. Now, because we really haven't touched it. We haven't touched that market. So let's discuss a few things that the audience needs to know about the USA market. Um, this is where you and I spent some time talking to some of the executives from Telemundo and Univision to understand uh, who work here in the US and it's a big part of the United States uh, television network now, how they really captured the Hispanic market. So we've been able to get a lot of information about what's going on in that market here. So uh, I'd like you to hit on that a little bit about what your, your thoughts are about what we picked up in reference to those conversations. Of course, of course. I mean, we know the Hispanic market is the fastest growing um, minority group in the nation. You know, we know that for instance, that it represents $1.7 trillion in purchasing power and growing. You know, it represents, half of the US population growth is the one that, as I said, has been growing and the one, the main driver of the USA growth since, since 2000. Also, we know that um, the Hispanics are, are younger uh, compared to other, other ethnic groups. You know, we have a lot of people that are young and they're under, for the most part, under, uh, under the age of 29. 
you know, and these are people that are used to purchasing the internet that are very tech savvy. They're digital savvy, not tech savvy. I take that back. Digital savvy. They're very connected to what's going on in social media. And uh, it's very interesting just to even know that they are one of the ones that use social media the most. And one of the reasons for that, uh, Carrie, is because the Hispanic market, it's a very community oriented um, market. People, we, will love, we like to be connected. We love to, to be in touch. We love to share life with others. And social media has become really an incredible component. Also, we love, um, Hispanics love videos and I love to be in touch with everyone, which is, which just goes great with the nature of the business model that we have with this class, don't you think? And it's really, really a great opportunity because it just comes natural to us. We know all our neighbors, you know, and, and when we come, when you come from a country, that is uh, from Latin America, you know, and live in the United States, we are used to know our neighbors, to talk to one another, to be friends with others, to celebrate a lot, and just to be connected. So that's why the direct selling has become one of the most incredible opportunities for this market. And some companies has already, have already tapped into this for, for the longest time. And so we need to do that as well. Well, you know, in doing our research now we're going to shift this conversation into what's necessary to be able to take advantage of the market in the u.s now also in our conversation with the spanish tv stations laura here in the united states they mentioned that billions every year is spent on promoting the hispanic culture and the majority of the shakers and movers in this market are bilingual speaking where they speak both english and spanish this is why it's important early like right now to talk to bilingual Hispanics to grow your market. And uh, what is your experience in this market? And would you mind explaining to everyone the importance of bilingual and building a market now that can expand quickly and fast? Yes, and you are so right on target on that one, Kerry. You know, sometimes we think the Hispanic community is all about Spanish speaking people, but we have all different kinds of uh, generations and it's really a combination of a lot of different elements. Uh, we have different generations, as I said, you know, the ones that came here years ago and only speak Spanish. Those that grew up came from their countries, but grew up here and they have the two, the best of the two worlds, you know, the Hispanic and the, the, the life here in America. And then we have the ones that were, were born here and they're completely English speaking. So you're gonna have a, a combination of a lot of different people within the Hispanic community. But if you wanna build your team, because I get this question all the time, Kerry, what am I gonna do? I don't speak Spanish. You don't have to speak Spanish. You need to find someone that is bilingual that can communicate with you. And I've seen it through the years and I, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not wrong. You know, leaders attract leaders. Leaders are not going to attract to a corporate person. Leaders attract leaders. And they're going to find a way to communicate with you and work with you if they see that there is an opportunity for them and their family. So your story of success, the results that you have in your hands are going to speak louder than any language that you can speak of. And we, because I'm sure, Carrie, that you agree with me that leaders attract leaders. And so what I'm saying with this is that you just need to find that one leader, just like me, that I go to work and speak English, I come home and speak Spanish, right? And I have the two worlds, and there's many people like that. If you go to an airport, if you go to a grocery store, if you go to any kind of place, you know, you're gonna see these people, these entrepreneurs, business owners in many, in many situations, or even managers, and and people in different corporations that they are Hispanic, they're bilingual, and many times they're hired because they're bilingual, but they go home and they speak Spanish. So as soon as you find that one person, he is gonna be or she could be the, the door open to this incredible community that is going to, you're gonna find all different kinds of people, the Spanish speaking, the English speaking, the bilingual, and you need to be ready. But the real truth, Carrie, it's not just finding one bilingual or, 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 or the bilinguals. You need to find the go-getter. You need to find the entrepreneur. You need to find that one that is passionate about what they see that you're doing. You need to find that one that wants a better quality of life. The one that is hungry for better, right? The one that wants to be part of this, uh, of something better and bigger than themselves. 
I have to say something very important, and Carrie, this is it. When we come from a different country, we have that desire to belong to something that is bigger than ourselves. We want to belong because our country is there. When we come here, that I want to be part of something. So when they find that one thing, that one opportunity, they're loyal as you cannot imagine. And, they are, and they're hard workers. These are people that are passionate. And if they believe in what they're doing, they stick to it through the long run. So what do you need? Look for that bilingual. If you don't speak Spanish, look for that one person. And sometimes you're gonna find that broken English, it doesn't matter. But above that, that one that is eager to find an opportunity and change his life and the life of their families. Their driver, the main driver for Hispanics, and of course, for many other companies, I mean, cultures, but for Hispanic, for the most part, are the desire to provide for their family a better quality of life. And that's a driver that you would not take from that, this beautiful community. And that is the one engine that will take them farther with you if you lock arms with them and, and work closely with them. And you know what I, I get just from meeting you in the last four weeks and going having conversations with you, just listening to you, I get these chills. I'm so excited. After 30 something years, I'm even more excited now than I've ever been. What a market to break into and have someone like you to help us. Now, Laura, you and I actually asked the executives of these networks about the hot states. And they told us this, and I want everybody to listen carefully. They told us the hot state. Steve, you're gonna like this. Texas. Louisiana, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada, and Florida. And interestingly, three states that caught my attention that was off the radar for me, New Jersey, New York, and listen to this, Illinois as a hot state. Now, although the market is available nationwide, we know that. Why are these states, Laura, considered such hotbeds? You know, there is a strong uh, presence in the Hispanic market in those areas. And I have found all different kinds of stories. And definitely, you know, the, the states that you just mentioned are highly uh, strong in the Hispanic market. But I want to share a, a brief story with you, um, Carrie, and with everyone who's listening. And way back then, years ago, working for a different co company, um, the number one Latino in the whole country and probably top globally was from Connecticut. I mean, who would have thought? I mean, who would have thought, you know? <laughs> Connecticut. He opened New York, New Jersey, of course, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, big time. And it was because of him that he opened Puerto Rico, big time. And that expanded through the whole uh, mainland. And with him and his team, we opened Colombia and Mexico. So if, if you ask me, would you go to work with uh, people in Connecticut? Yeah, I mean, if there's people there, if there's an audience, if there's people that are hungry for it. So you don't need to be in LA to, to, be, to, to say that this market is, you have the greatest opportunity, you do, but you are gonna find a jewel, just like this Jose that I'm talking to you about in the places where you are. And you know better than me that one person can lead you to another person. Maybe you find Jose, that is really not so interested, that found Maria, that is really kind of interested, that find Guillermo, who is an amazing, amazing leader. So really the name of the game is who do you know? I would say that from now on, if you're interested, all you have to, to do is to look for that one person that is gonna tap into this market and work closely with you. And the question is, who do you know? If you don't know anybody, start asking, who do you know? We have the best opportunity ever and so everybody has an opportunity. I believe that if you are in a highly Hispanic area, let's say Los Angeles or Florida or New York or any place, you know, it would be, I would, if I were you, I would make my goal this year in to build and expand my business, my Juice Plus business into this community. It's all about looking, be intentional and look for that one person. You know, I, oh, I, I, and if you don't, let's say you live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, let's say you live in Arkansas, that's great. I'm sure you're gonna find Hispanics there. You just need to look, and as I say again, you know, who do you know in this community that will be interested in an opportunity just like this? You know, that's so true, Laura. I mean, we, uh, we actually 
in building in an English speaking country, of course, 24 hours from here in Australia and New Zealand, we found people here that led us to people in Australia. Now we have many NMDs in that country. So you're hundred percent correct. And now think that we're just right across the border from a really phenomenal country. Now, in all the conversations, Bar, we learn how Hispanics utilize smartphones, how they utilize iPads, and so forth. Would you mind elaborating on that? Yes, actually, we found that Hispanic users spend 10.5, 10 and a half hours per week using the internet compared to general population of Americans who only use it eight hours a day. So Hispanics are, as I said before, very connected and in, the, in social media, they love the internet, they watch videos more than any others, they love Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu and all these platforms that are very, very well connected in this, in this, um, in the, with these platforms. And so, as I said before, I mean, it, they are plugging into this, so it's going to be easier for, for you to help them navigate through through the different uh, plat platforms that we have to be trained, to be you know, engaged and to be part of what we're doing right now. Definitely Facebook is like huge in the Hispanic market and this is pretty much the platform that we're using now. So it's gonna be, it's just, that, uh, it's, it's encouraging just to think about that, that they are not like isolated in, a, in their own world, but they're actually integrated with what's going on globally, you know, and of course in, our, in this country. Well, I want everyone to kind of listen carefully and maybe put in your notes what you just said. So the Hispanics spend about 10 and a half hours a week utilizing the internet, where a lot of the Americans spend about eight hours. So there is a huge difference there. That's interesting. Um, okay, well, here's uh, the big question. How do we tap into the Hispanic community if we don't speak the language? I think you covered that earlier a little bit. And many people are going to talk to maybe their landscape or in a contractor or someone that's Hispanic that they think uh, are into a huge market. But if they aren't bilingual, wouldn't you have a challenge to communicate effectively to create a huge team? I want to come back to that question because I think that's so important because what I've learned from you is how to build huge dynamic teams. And you gave us the clue in our conversation this week. And I want everybody else to hear it. You know, Carrie, I love that you bring that question back because um, what I have found through the years working for different co corporations, helping them to tap into the market, I think that the biggest bar barrier is in our minds. The biggest barrier is thinking that this market is not for you, for you because you're not Hispanic, or this market is not for you because you don't speak the language. And one of the roles that I have played in the past is to help people really shift that mindset because it is for you. I have found the top leaders, and I, I say this with all honesty, I have found the top leaders in, of, in companies working the Hispanic market, being invited and sponsored by an English speaking person, by English speaking leader. It is because I go back to the same thing, leaders attract leaders and nothing is gonna speak louder than the results that you have in your hands, the story that you can share with them about what you've done already with Juice Plus. And also the an amazing opportunity, the incredible products that we have in our hands, with incredible history that we have, you know, with a very solid company that has a track record of success. We have something, a treasure in our hands that we have to, to share, you know? And I would say, don't be afraid. I mean, I, I, should, I, I know that, that uh, sometimes could be intimidated. How am I gonna talk with this person? But I have found that when people are interested, they find a way to communicate. Maybe, as I said before, their English is not great. It's kind of broken. But you look at that woman, you know, that, with that entrepreneurial spirit, just building their own small businesses when they have their nail salons, when they sell clothing within their friends, when they go, I mean, they find ways to, to have their own business. The nature of a, a Hispanic's uh, in, in, for the most part, is entrepreneur. We are looking for opportunities. As you said before, we come to this country to offer a better quality of life to our families. So instead of thinking, should I, am I going to be able to communicate with this person? Am I going to be able to tap into this market because I'm not bilingual? Just think, am I going to be able to, 
to, to provide a great opportunity or to share a great opportunity with this person that is in front of me that may be different, look different, and speak different, but probably you can unite in that one, that one common denominator, which is the passion to change people's lives, the passion to change their health and to change uh, uh, their lives and have stories, successful stories to share. So let's not focus on what we, the differences, because the differences between one culture and the other is what makes us stronger, right? And that is going to actually going to bring us the great opportunity to go and penetrate this market everywhere you are. And I, be, I believe it with all my heart. So look for that bilingual, look for that Spanish speaking that is eager for a change, you know, and don't stop asking. Don't stop asking. You know, it, that's the question. And I know that you, the ones who are listening to me today, I know that that's what you do all the time. You are experts in promoting your business, in talking about this amazing opportunity, in building your teams, in mentoring, do the same. But just with your intention of who will be my next leader in the Hispanic market, do exactly the same, just with intention to begin to look for that one person or that group of people that you want to include in your team. Look at the someone with that eye of the tiger, right? <laughs> And there's something you mentioned earlier, too, when we were discussing this week. You, you said this. I remember your quote. You said, Kerry, once you find someone that's bilingual and has the eye of the tiger, pour into them and become the ambassador between the cultures. And I wrote that down. I said, okay, I got it. I got it. And... Uh, you know, you're right. The Hispanics do come to America for the American dream. There's no question about that. Home ownership, financial success. And one thing that we both know, they're not afraid of hard work. They love family. And I've learned they especially love their moms. They really do. Nothing wrong with dads. I'm a dad. But they really love their moms. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> true. My experience is that the culture starts late in the morning. I've been dealing in professional sports and dealing with the Hispanic market for 45 years. And, uh, but they work till midnight or even later if they have to. Now, could you give us some insight on this? In working with the Hispanic market for over 40 years, as I mentioned earlier, in my promotional company, they would contact me late at night, 10, 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock, and you say, oh my goodness. Or sometimes they even have meetings late at night. So they don't mind working once they get real interested. They go all out. Would you mind sharing a little bit of your history there and what yes. you know about the Hispanic market? Put that yeah, in of course, of course. And um, I'm sure guys, you know that the Hispanic market is all about family. It's all about community. You know, family is the number one driver, as I said before, the number one more motivation to tap in, in, in a business that they know they're going to get, uh, they're going to improve their lifestyle for, for them and their families. So, you know, what I've seen, and you know, there's a lot of women in this industry and even in juice class and uh, above anything else, they're moms, you know, for the most part. And usually if you go through statistics in the Hispanic market, you're going to see that families in the Hispanic market are bigger than any other ethnic group. They usually have more children. So that's why families and moms need to spend more time with their kids. And for them, just getting into the night, it will be the easiest time for them to actually connect. Also, it happens when they are in school, the kids are in school, they take advantage of that time to talk, to, to connect, to train and everything. But evenings are really uh, a big part of how they want to be communicated in, and how they want to be trained, how they want to connect with the, the field, how, how they want to, to, to connect with you and be part of what you are already doing to support the market. So I do believe that they're really hard workers. And if you notice, I mean, because they're bigger families, they also are looking for ways to in increase their income. They are always welcome. The opportunities that, will allow, that allow them to work uh, and to bring an, an extra income to the family, but at the same time, giving the flexibility to be with their kids and spend time with the kids because that's, and I'm, when I say kids, could be grown up kids too, you know, because this is a, a, a very family united uh, uh, community. They, they do things together all the time. And also, I want to add that 
it's all about celebration. You know, we always find reasons to celebrate, to be together, you know, and, uh, and, and that's also a big thing because we can always be together and sharing, you know, sharing juice class with cousins and aunts and, 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 you know, siblings and all different kinds of uh, people that we're going to find on the way, because that's the nature of this, of this, of this uh, beautiful community. Any final comments for everyone that's listening in as far as tip, Laura? Yeah, I, well, my comments would be, you know, think big, think big, you know, believe in your heart that this is for you too. I don't want you to just to see it from a distance. Don't be an expectator of what's going to happen with Juice Blast in the Hispanic market. Be a participator. Find out ways to, 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 to be part of this. It's going to be great and going to be big. And this, 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 uh, this get together, this meeting with all of you guys is an invitation so that you guys really open your horizons and see yourself as part of this incredible movement that is starting with Juice Blast. So that will be my, my, uh, my recommendation. Think big, make a plan. And as I said before, the name of the game is who do you know? Who do you know and start connecting with them? Who do you know and start you know, providing information? Who do you know? Because if you build here, as we said before, you build here in your backyard, wherever you are, in Texas, in New York, in Florida, you know, in Puerto Rico, in Los Angeles, wherever you are, that is your backyard. That's the most, you're gonna have the most uh, way of you to influence is gonna be in your backyard. But it just starts there so that you can go and, 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 and take advantage of the greatest opportunities that we have in front of us, which is the opening of Mexico. So start in your backyard, build, connect, support, train, mentor, make sure that these people begin to have results as soon as possible so that you can tap into the great opportunity that we have ahead of us, which is Mexico as well. And if you do well here, you know, it's going to resonate and it's going to extend in, in Mexico and Latin America when we open all those countries as well. So this is really the ground floor opportunity. This is this is, uh, this is the opportunity to start something big within your business that will tap into Mexico and Latin America. And I, I want to invite you, invite you to be uh, a pioneer, be the pioneer of this, of this great movement now with Just Class. Well, thank you so much, Laura, for your time today. Uh, this is, these were very important tips. Uh, we've been very blessed, my wife and I, and been able to go into a foreign market and take advantage of that. It's a large income for a lot of people. Once you go into a foreign market that's new, it can grow into something really large. And we know it can happen here in the Hispanic community. But as you mentioned, it has to start in the USA first. I want to switch it over to Steve real quick. Steve, maybe real quick in a minute or two. Uh, if you could unmute yourself and just kind of give me your thought about today. And uh, you, you have a lot of the states that are, uh, have a lot of the Hispanic population. What do you see happening? Yeah, I do. Thank you, Carrie and, and Laura. That was that was awesome. Um, you you really captured uh, what we're trying to do as a company and who we should be. And you know, I for those of you who don't know me, I spent eight years as a regional director at Avon, and many of our top leaders were U.S. Hispanics, and it's because they learned how to tap into this market, and. That's, that's a real important thing. Once you ignite it a little bit, the whole thing begins to blow up. And we cannot hesitate here. Um, we have so much untapped potential, we haven't ever been in this market. And now we're lucky enough to have Laura spearheading that effort as we move forward. The two things I'll add, one of them that Laura hit on was number one, is that this company has been around for 50 years. 26, 27 years is Juice Plus. So it's a long-standing company with a history. There's nothing to be afraid of there. And second of all, the narrow product line that we have, right? The narrow product line we have allows us to be able to simply describe who we are as far as product is concerned to a market that doesn't know who we are. Everybody with me on that? And so that's a really important thing. And you know what? Having Laura as a bridge, as a resource and what she has been doing, and I see it every day behind the scenes with translations and resources and video and collateral is gonna make your job so much easier. But, but don't wait, 
right? Because the time is now, the time is now, and all of a sudden you have a brand new market that's opened up in your own backyard. And why not grow in your own backyard? And I think, Carrie, you hit it on perfectly. Every single state in this country has a huge Hispanic population. It's the largest growing demographic we have in the US, and we haven't been a part of it until now. And so I'm excited about this opportunity. I'm so excited to work with Laura. We, we've got, we're like this already. And um, she doesn't know it yet, but we're gonna be joined at the hip uh, moving forward. So, so thanks so much, Carrie, for letting me say a few words. Um, I love uh, all the people that came on today. Like you took time out of your day because you knew it was important. It's always so much easier not to come on, but you made it uh, a point to come on today and be with us. And so I really appreciate it from, from our company. Well, I, I see Dr. Madera just kind of dropped off. I was gonna ask him to say goodbye. I don't think he's there anymore. Uh, he dropped off, he kind of gave me a little wave and all that. But we're gonna uh, go ahead and unmute yourself so you can tell Laura goodbye and thank you so much. And believe me, you're gonna see a lot more of Laura because you've got a plan. Hey, gracias, um, Laura. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura.